So we went home. We went home. I told John I just wanted to think things through. I was excited about what this all meant and scared to death at the same time. I mean, if he's alive, I couldn't wait to see him, but I, I, was, I wasn't sure I wanted to face him. I was so ashamed of how I deserted him. Oh God, I cried. Can you forgive me? I want to believe you, Ken. I want to believe. I wanted to believe, but it's just incredible. When Mary Magdalene came, came in telling me the stone was moved, the guards were gone, Jesus' body was gone, I didn't know what it all meant. How can this be? What would anybody want the body for? Was his body just stolen? Or could the impossible have happened? Could he have risen from the dead as he said he would? I wanted to believe. I wanted to believe that this was an act of God and not the act of grave robbers. I headed back to the tomb to gather my thoughts to see if I could make sense of it all. When I got there, it just hit me, and I started to weep. I was standing outside of the tomb just weeping. Then for some reason, I have no idea why, I leaned down to look inside the tomb, and I couldn't believe my eyes. Two angels sat in the tomb, one where Jesus' head must have been, and the other where his feet were. They said, why are you weeping? I cried to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Then I laid my head on the rock and just started to weep. I wept as the thoughts poured through my mind. What if he was alive? What if the prophecies are coming to pass? All the words Gabriel told me came to my mind. I lifted my eyes to God and I wept. I wept in joy, in guilt, in triumph, in shame, in hope. I wept. I wept knowing in my heart that Jesus was the Son of God. So many thoughts came to my mind. So many things he had said were starting to make sense. It was too much. My heart leaped with joy and I turned to God and in joy I wept. I wept I was so angry. I was mad at the Roman guards. I was mad at the disciples. I was mad at the Sanhedrin for not sending more men to guard the grave. I wept at the thought of how this theft of the body would make more people question Jesus. It wasn't over as I thought. Oh, Jehovah, what do I do? I cried as I when wept. Thus I turned, and I saw a man. I assumed he was a gardener. My eyes were too filled with tears to see him clearly. He too asked, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? I told him I was looking for Jesus, and he said, Mary. I couldn't believe it. It was him. It was Jesus. I wanted. I ran to him, but he told me, don't cling to me, but go to the disciples and tell him I'm going to ascend to my father, to your father, to my God, to your God. And so I ran. I ran to the Sanhedrin and gathered the Pharisees and Sadducees together. I filled them in on what had happened. The disciples had stolen the body of the false teacher. It was going to be a mess, I warned them. This would make people want to follow Jesus. It would make this his disciples look powerful. They could tell people anything, and without the body in the tomb, people would believe them. We needed to stick together. We needed to uphold the truth. We needed to stick to the law. We needed to remind everyone Jesus was killed and he died. Don't let anyone convince you he is alive. He is alive! Mary Magdalene saw my son. He talked to her. He said he was going to send to the Father, his Father, his God. My Father, my God. I can't believe it. He's alive. My son is risen. I want to dance and sing and tell everyone. He is alive. He is alive was all I could say. I told Mary and Solomon and Peter and John and Matthew and Thomas and the rest of the disciples. He is alive. I saw him. He's ascending to the Father, to I, our Father. He said to tell everyone, he is alive. He's alive, I said. Many kept laughing and jumping and hugging me. Yes, he's alive. I talked to him. He's coming to see you. I stopped to catch my breath. He's alive. For a moment, I forgot about my shame, the garden, the denial, the fear. And I shouted, he's alive. Jesus has risen from the dead. I've seen the empty tomb. He is alive. 
Mary and Peter told me. Mary Magdalene and Peter and Jesus' mom were all talking at once. We need to tell everyone. He was dead, but now he lives. Jesus was persecuted. He was lied about. He was beaten. He was crucified. He was dead, but now he lives. Who else can die and then live but the Son of God? I looked at all of them and grabbed all of them in, in a big hug and said, Praise be to God! Then words came to me. It must have been from God himself. I stood on top of a stool and said, For the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever should believe in him would be would have it, would not perish and have everlasting life. My friends, we are to live a new commandment, as Jesus said. We are to love one another. We are to spread this word about Jesus. He is the true Son of God who came to this earth and lived among us and died. But that's only the beginning. The good news is that Jesus is alive. He is risen. Praise God. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed, and that is the story of the first Easter. That is why we are here today. The tomb was empty because Jesus had risen. It's time to celebrate. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. When we were in the upper room with Jesus, right before he was betrayed and crucified, we ate a meal with him. And during the meal, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to us and said, This is my body given for you. Eat it in memory, in my memory. Then he took the cup, and thanking God, he gave it to us and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, God's new covenant, poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Loving triune God, the Lord, your table is here, Lord. Bless the sacraments and bless all of us your beloved children, as we take these symbols of Christ and his love for us. He is in us, and we are in him. He is in the Father. In his name we pray, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. I want to invite each one of us to come and eat at the Lord's table that he has prepared for us all, for all of you. Come and eat, and let's continue to celebrate Jesus. We can start from the back and work, work our way. <clears throat>